Hey, Robert Kiefer here with Hydro Hero. And today I'm going to walk you through a job that we just stepped in. It was an absolute nightmare and we transformed it back into a healthy, clean, dry, and energy efficient space. Let's check this out. Okay, so here we go. We stepped into this uh, crawl space and um, basically it was a water bed in here. What I want to point out is the really bad installation job. I mean, this is essentially a little bit better than packing tape that they use to hold the vapor barrier against the uh, foundation wall. This is a brand new house, uh, not very old at all, and everything's starting to fall apart. As you can see, even the seams on this six mil uh, vapor barrier that they had down on the ground, uh, they use that same type of packing tape. You see the columns aren't wrapped properly. So all the moisture from the soil is going, as it evaporates, is going right up into the crawl space, raising that relative humidity above 60%. And that's when you start uh, getting mold growth. So we'll go over to this next one. All right. So here it is just attached to the foam board. All this has been floating in water and we're gonna to get to the reason why it's been floating in water here just shortly. Again, this, does this look professional to you? It certainly doesn't to me. And certainly this is not the quality you'll ever get with us. You can just see that this, everything about this insulation, installation of the vapor barrier is just completely wrong. Just sloppy, sloppy, sloppy work all the way around. I mean, it's it's already falling off the wall here, as you can see. Here's water puddles. You know, this is falling off of the wall. That's why you see it all slouched like that. Water uh, that's been sitting on top of the vapor barrier, too, that breached all of these so-called seams same thing just hack job workmanship this is because a lot of the builders hire uh, subcontractors for the lowest possible price so you may pay a lot of money for this beautiful home and think that you have a condition crawl space but uh, what you really got was a hack job down there and typically most people aren't finding uh, this out until there's been a problem. They don't really go down in their crawl space. I encourage you, if you have a crawl space that's been conditioned when you already bought the house, that either you go down there and look for these things that I'm showing you, or you give Hydro Hero a call and let us come down and do a free inspection for you, make sure that everything's working the way that it should be. Now we're starting on our first day to pull back this um, vapor barrier and you see all the water that's trapped underneath of it. There is drainage here, but you're about to see why I put so many of these videos out warning you about contractors telling you that they're putting a drain system in and not knowing what they're doing. Again, we have uh, more six mil underneath here on and then this vapor barrier on top of that vapor barrier. So we've got vapor barriers stacked on top of vapor barriers trying to block out the water. More water right underneath of it. And here you go. Now all the technicians have removed the vapor barrier that's already been installed. This is after the water has had time to recede and what little bit pumped out that could be pumped out. So this soil is absolutely saturated completely. I mean, when you step in there, you just sink ankle deep, if not more, instantly. This is not a job for guys that are practicing. This is for the real professionals that understand how to dry things, what real waterproofing and structural drying. And you have to have the equipment be able to take care of this stuff properly. So. Let's look at some more pictures. Look how much standing water is still in here. Now, there's a drain system here around the entire perimeter of this. This is clay soil, and you have to have certain things in your drainage system for it not to clog. 
first of all, do you see any aggregate, any type of stone or anything around this footer indicating that there is um, that there is a drain system? No, you don't. We had to dig for it. The number one thing you want to do with clay soil, especially, is you don't want to bury a pipe in clay soil. There you go. You can see more of how the you know the water is just everywhere here. So here's the footer and where the footer ends. The drain tile should be here. This is why this hole's dug. Our guys are trying to find out if there was drain tile to begin with. There's indications from looking inside the sub pump that there was, and we needed to find it. Well, long and behold, when we started digging beside this footer, it wasn't there where it was supposed to be. It's over here, way too far uh, from the footer for a proper install. Now, this has a filter sock on it, and we're going to get into that here. So now you can probably see that filter sock that's on there. Again, this is clay soil. This will all, this is going to instantly clog, and that's what happened. I mean, it took no time at all. This is not a proper install, and this is what most of your crawl space um, encapsulation uh, companies are doing. They're just putting a sock and pipe down in a trench and then burying it and, or putting stone maybe every 5 to 10 feet to hold it down, and that's it. And that system's going to clog. It's just a matter of time. Again, you can see all the water that's coming through here. So now we're starting to dig out the pipe, right? We got to remove this because we want, when we install our system, we don't want this void in here and we don't want the water being directed into a pipe that isn't going um, where we want it. We want to make sure we're capturing all the water properly and taking it to the sub pump and then having that exited outside to daylight and far from the home's foundation. This is just another angle of that same thing. Here you go. We're just starting to dig and starting to yank. You can see this is all just clogged up. I mean, it just did nothing there whatsoever. The, uh, the fabric that's around here is not a DOT-approved soil separator fabric that has a high water flow rate. Right? This is just going to instantly clog. It's meant to have stone around it to protect the filter, which is really backwards from how you should install proper drain tile. Again, just how much water is caked in here. You can see here is the, um, the four-inch perforated pipe with the sock on it that our guys are digging out from the previous company. Again, just more and more water. I mean, this is just so saturated. Just unbelievable. Just digging this pipe out everywhere. Here we go. Just digging more. You see, you see the shovel, quite a few inches of water in that in just that spot still. Alright. The pipe was going or the um the sub pump that they had installed uh went right into the um uh the gutter. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Um if it works, it works, but I'm not really a fan of that. So anyways, we've, okay, so at this stage, we have removed everything out. We re-dug the trench. You can see it's nice and right against the footer, slightly below where it's supposed to be. Now we're going to uh, dig this all the way around. We're going to fill that with aggregate. We have a proper sub pump basin put in here that with perforated holes, if you watch our videos and why that's so important. And then uh, we have a clear lid that's uh, completely gas uh, sealed. On there, we have our drain tile being uh, attached to one of two sub pumps that we have in here. The original company only had one, but the amount of linear footage and the footprint of it demanded two to properly dewater this space. So we got all of our stuff in there. You can see this is our again DOT approved filter, so uh, non woven geotextile soil separator fabric allows 145 gallons per square foot of this to enter the pipe now that much you're never going to need but we like these things screaming as my friend uh, robert sherwood would say so here we are laying the pipe getting everything connected to that's the second sub pump we're going to start getting a lot of this water out now as we well we're still installing the pipe you can see it going right into the trench. The filter fabric, if you choose the right one that's meant for dewatering, 
you, it will not clog. That is, it's to separate the soil and allow all the uh, bulk water to come in there at a super fast rate. So here we go. We're in installing everything there. All right. Now this stage, we turn around and we ducted. Um, this is for our indirect fired heater. We got that in there. This is pumping hot, dry air into the crawl space now. This is an exhaust fan to make sure that as the, uh, the um, as the uh, evaporation starts in the soil and this raises all the moisture into the airspace that it's evacuating it outside the building envelope and it is um, and that we have air exchanges consistently going on. Now we left this for I believe four days running. You can see the, the heat one going in, the exhaust one going out. You see that we have all of our stone gravel encased in here, and then we have our geotextile pinned in here, so we have a contained drainage system, so it can never get clogged, and it will resist all this clay from stopping the uh, water from getting in there into the system properly. So here we go. Again, you can see how wet the soil is as we've hooked that up. You know, I'm almost already see that it's starting to get better now that we have our contained drain system all the way in there. Now, nobody else in the area is doing contained drain systems uh, in the crawl space that I am aware of. I would bet that nobody is doing this. And I'll tell you a couple reasons why. Because it costs more in labor. It costs more in material to do it right. And everybody, it seems, is in for a money grab. So they are putting in... All kinds of different things, um, but they are certainly not containing the drainage system properly. Uh, a lot of companies I know are literally putting the filter sock four inch perforated pipe in there and they are taking a bag of stone and they are putting it, you know, maybe every five to 10 feet all the way around just to hold the pipe there. And um, they're telling you that you're getting this type of drain system, but what they're actually doing is far from it. And they just want to pocket more of the money instead of doing the job right because it takes more time and labor. Here's our sub pump all hooked up and that'll be all cleaned up and everything as you'll see at the very end of this. Again, contained drain system, properly done. Soil starting to dry out. Soil starting to dry out. You see little pockets of moisture. But this is a proper drainage system. You, you know, guys want to save a couple dollars and, uh, you know, pocket that. We rather protect our customers and our reputation. Again, exhaust. This is the, um, the ducted heat coming from our indirect fired heaters. Most of your, most if not all of your uh, restoration contractors here or your, I'm sorry, your crawl space encapsulation uh, companies here um, do not have indirect fired heaters. They're not equipped to properly dry this soil out in a good amount of time to take care of um, the muddy mess problem that's in here to simplify it. Uh, because you got to have a proper install. You can't come in here and just start throwing a vapor barrier down. It's not going to work. Everybody, everything's going to sink into it. It's going to be an absolute mess you got to dry this out. And again, most of these contractors that are doing crawl space encapsulation are not prepared. We're certified in structural drying um, for commercial buildings, residential buildings, and we've been doing this for over uh, 20 years now. Here's our contained drain system again. See all the moisture that's in there. All right, so now we have a proper sub pump discharge line with a freeze relief going out and away from the house and that will make sure it doesn't continually go right back into the footer into the drain system and circulate um, you know from outside to inside over and over and over making those uh, sub pumps run lo longer than they should so we're putting the soil back and everything this one we ended up having to tie that into not normally what we need to but because of the landscape they had there we had no other option on this one this is the second um, sub pump 
All right, so now we've dried everything out. We've waited quite a few days for this and we have this completely sealed. So as you can see, we've got this 100% done right now. Vapor barriers wrapper in the columns. It's properly sealed with the proper seam tape, proper seam tape, proper seam tape, right? This is impervious to water. Everything has been super cleaned, um, graded as best we could. Uh, on this one, it's not 100%, um, but it is 85%, maybe 90% uh, um, uh, graded out to where we like it. But um, this is now completely contained. The only thing that we were able to save from this uh, prior company was the actual um, insulation board on the wall. Other than that, pretty much everything had to go. Luckily, the HVAC system was in good condition still. We put in our April Air 1850 workhorse dehumidifier. We have that ducted. You can't see all where that ends up being dumped out way over here in the crawl space. But um, this balances out that drying, um, our drying system. So this dehumidifier doesn't short cycle. And I'll show you a video of, the, of that later on as well. Here's a second sub pump in the back that we added to handle the actual dewatering. And then we have one way up here in the front part as well on the opposite side. So uh, we have completely uh, sealed um, sub pump covers and that let, doesn't let any odors or gases come back into it. Um, Here you go. We've suspended the HVAC system and we have everything wrapped up and sealed 100%. I think you'll agree that's a beautiful job. Again, we only install April Air. Uh, they are the best dehumidifiers on in the industry, in our opinion. I mean, we have tried everything years and years ago. Uh, we switched to April Air, gave them a shot and never looked back. Um, these are the only guys that we can stand but beside our warranty with April Air. Just fantastic machines. Here we are again. You probably can't see that. I think it's 49% when I was down there, but I got a video I will show at the end. This is the beautiful work. If you remember how bad and wet and nasty uh, this job originally was until we finished it. So this is what a proper encapsulation looks like. Wood looks like brand new. HVAC system is completely protected, no moisture issues, everything sealed properly, going to be a clean, dry, healthy space. Uh, this customer should probably go ahead and list this on Airbnb and start charging people to live down here. There's, again, our other sub pump that was on the other end. And just a beautiful job. Beautiful job. So, again, before and afters, this is what it looked like when we started the job. This is at, this is after. This is the same space. Here's that duct going over. Here it is, just slightly different angle, right? So this is what you get when you hire a hack job. This is what you get when you hire Hydro Hero. Here's another shot. This is that same direct or different direction here coming in from the door. This is what it was like when we started. This is what it's like when we're finished. Got any questions, give us a call, 302-321-7077. I am now going to go ahead and uh, drop the inspection video on the final day. Let's have you guys join us on this walkthrough. Cool. Hope you guys like this so much. Hey, Robert Kiefer here with Hydro Hero, and I showed you um, what this project looked like beforehand how badly it was done and the major water intrusion that was there and the drainage that was installed improperly and there wasn't proper environmental controls here now we're actually finished with the job we're going to show you what it looks like now that it's fixed right by hydro hero so let's go check this out okay so here we are in this crawl space and show you we got one of our sub pumps hooked up here and uh, this is a three-quarter horsepower sub pump that we have going on we 
had complete drainage that we had to pull up from the original contractor that was all the way around here. They didn't have it. They had it way too far out and not next to the footer. And to top it off, um, they didn't have any aggregate or any type of uh, DOT approved filter fabric to stop the soil from migrating into the actual uh, pipe. So it all clogged and it flooded this out really, really bad. As you guys saw in that video earlier where I was showing you uh, the job when we first took it on. So all that's been fixed. We put proper drainage system around here, our Hydro uh, Hero contained drain system. And we, as I said, we got that one sub pump hooked up there. Um, we have another sub pump. I'll take you back down there in a second and show you that. So we have this thing is hard as a rock now. I mean, super hard. And this was just all mush and uh, had to be completely dried out and dewatered properly. And now it's like concrete. So anyways, you can see the wood all looks like new. There's no mold growth. It's absolutely beautiful. The HVAC system is well done, well insulated. Everything looks great there. Got the HVAC air handler uh, hung and suspended properly. So we'll come down here. You can see the relative humidity is under control. Uh, we literally just finished this job a few minutes ago. It's already down to 49% relative humidity. See how nice this job looks. This was originally just being conditioned with the uh, uh, HVAC and we are uh, not uh, big proponents of trying to use that to dehumidify. It just doesn't work as well. Now this April Air 1850, this will take care of this job no problem. It'll always keep it right around 45% after it's been here the first 24 hours. We of course have our non-insulated ducting running all the way around to the other side of the crawl space where it turns around and dumps all the dry hot air. As you can see, it goes way over there. They've taken it over, dumps it away from the um, dehumidifier. And the reason that that is so important is because you can imagine you have the dehumidifier setting here. When the um, humidistat is inside the dehumidifier, it goes outwards, you know, as it dehumidifies in all directions. So it can give a false positive on how, uh, how the air really is because it's sampling right at the dehumidifier. So you want to drop that hot, dry air at the other side. That way it dehumidifies everything and balances that out. Here's our second sub pump that we have over there. And uh, that's hooked to our drain tile as well. That was making sure that this, all the water um, drains out of here and goes out to a freeze relief on the outside and is all taken care of, draining far away from the foundation vent. So again, here is this job completely redone. The only thing that we could really salvage in this job was uh, the insulation that's on the foundation walls. Outside of that, everything else had to be gutted and completely redone. So if you are looking to have your crawl space done properly so you're not paying twice for the same job, give Hydro Hero a call at 302-321-7077. Find us on the web at hydrohero.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Please give us a thumbs up. Please like our page if this is on Facebook. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. And hopefully we can help you restore your crawl space to a healthy, dry, energy-efficient space. Have a great day. Oh, by the way, Robert Kiefer here. This is my main man, Melvin, and Bradley over here. And that video that you just saw, the amazing transformation, done by these two guys. Oh yeah, they get all the credit. I didn't have anything to do with it. Yes, not these guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. You guys take care.